Welcome once again. You are listening to episode six on The Voice in the Valley. Whether you're listening to 90.3 FM or you're listening to collegestreetradio.com or you stumbled across us on many platforms, we are so excited because today in house we have Mr. Jared. And Jared here is, uh, uh, you know, just to brag about on him, he's also a friend of mine. He's a business owner, business coach, husband, father of two, actually sits on our board here at College Street. Victory Church, um, and as a uh, part owner of, well, him and his wife are owner of Spick and Span Cleaners. Just mm-hmm. going to do a little plug because <laughs> as we speak, as we're in studio now, they are cleaning our our facility, which is over a, what twenty over twenty. I think it's twenty seven thousand eight hundred square feet roundabout. That's right. So hopefully you get to come check us out sometime. And if you're in the area, come check out our studio space, our kids theater, or. Um, many, uh, we also have our collab. Anyway, not to get into all of that, Jared, thank you for coming on today. Well, it's been, it's an honor to be on here. And uh, yeah, Pastor Matt and myself, we've known each other for a long time mm-hmm. um, through ministry circles, but we, it's pretty cool because the past four years since he and his beautiful family have moved out here to BC, we've gotten to spend a lot of time together and get to know each other. He's a brother. He's my pastor. He's currently my coach, and I am just thankful to be here today. Come on. Oh, thanks for that, Jerry. You didn't have to do that, but I received that. Man, you just made my day. <laughs> All right, so yeah, you know what? I think for all of our listeners that are out there, one thing we're seeing some common trends, and that is more and more we're getting startups. We're getting young entrepreneurs. You know, they're tired of the the nine to five. Uh, they want flexibility. They want freedom. They want to be able to kind of like do their own thing. But honestly, Jared, they don't know where to start, and the statistics are kind of against them. Uh, you know, why don't we talk about some of those statistics for new startups and, and how come these new startups don't last? Uh, so uh, let's just start right there. Uh, statistically, how many actually make it past the first year? Oh, you know? man, I, I honestly don't know hard statistics anecdotally. Um, you know, I, I'm I'm 49, going on 50 this year, and i I've been in I've been involved in business since my my early teens. We grew up in a in, in a family business. Mm-hmm. I always looked at business. I always aspired to be a business owner right from the time I was a child. And anecdotally, looking through the years, through my observations, I would say probably one out of three might make it past, you know, that magic mark seems to be that five year mark. That's when you really start to, no, that's really when you start to turn a profit and that's, you know, that's a big deal. I've heard it's as high as 90% of startups don't make it past the first year, let alone the three year. And uh, the reality is a lot of them aren't even making money until past three years. So it's the whole longevity. Somebody once said, you'll be disappointed at what you do in like two years, but you'll be amazed at what you do in five years. Absolutely. If you've got a plan, if you're strategic, you got the right who before the do, Mm -hmm. uh, and you got, you know, you got a plan. But that's where guys like you come in. You know, guys with not just the knowledge, because we can all find knowledge out there, but have the wisdom, have the application of that knowledge and that experience. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, what would you say to, to someone that's even thinking about starting a business? What are the, the first things that you would uh, challenge anyone that wants to do different or in, invest in uh, themselves or in their community when it comes to their business? Well, there's two things I would probably tell that that young person or, you know, you know, and there's, there's a lot of... Um, there's a lot of middle-aged folks and a lot of seniors that are even looking at That's starting right. their own business nowadays. You know, we just went through a, a period of uh, upheaval. Mm. And a lot of people, you know, when they when they looked and they're like, my job is my security. I've got a government mm. job. I've got a city job. Sure. They found out that that security wasn't there anymore. Nope. So, you know, they're they're looking at something that, you know, might bring them a little bit more meaning in life. And usually the path to that is through entrepreneurship or owning your own business. I would say two things to folks who are starting out their own business. Number one, I would say take stock because it's not an easy road. Mm. It's, it's a hard road. There's lots of pitfalls. Um, starting your own business and being successful takes a lot of sacrifice. Mm. Uh, monetarily, uh, time, family, there's, there's a sacrificial component to it. 
Number two, um, and I, I just got introduced um, to this world uh, the past probably five or six months. We did a Kingdom Builders course That's here right. at church, and I taught it. And I got intro- really introduced to this whole world of coaching. Mm-hmm. And I would say number two, find if you want success for the long term, you want to make your road a little bit easier on that entrepreneur road, yeah. find yourself a good coach. Come on. So count the cost, find a coach. Yes, absolutely. And if you're listening right now and you haven't written that down, write it down. Habakkuk 2.2 says, take the vision, write it down, make it plain, so those that read it can run with it. Absolutely. And for all of our listeners that, you know, have taken the time to get in the Word, uh, we know that Proverbs 29.18 says, without vision, we perish. So we all have an idea of what we'd like to do, but I think both you and I can agree that uh, clarity is power. People oh, have absolutely. vague goals. Vague goals lead to vague results. But we believe that God has put a dream, a passion, desire inside of you that he's just waiting to unlock. But again, like you said, you know, are you willing to count the cost? Mm-hmm. Are you willing to go the distance? Not just what can you do, but how long can you go? Mm-hmm. And and we've talked about this before, but maybe know the power of your why. Mm-hmm. you don't know the purpose of something, you'll abuse it. And if you don't know the why... You'll say goodbye. Yeah. So you got to have something that's going to carry you through on those days, which you've had, and I'm sure you can speak oh, to, when you don't feel like grinding, you don't feel like yeah. putting in the work, and you're like, hey, is this is this all worth it? What am I doing this for? Mm-hmm. And who am I doing this for? So maybe on that one, you know, like what are some of the things that have kept you going in your business and you didn't throw in the towel and you became successful? Well, again, if I can, if I can point to a couple things um, – my my family my family business background I started out in the concrete world and uh, ended up in, at the point where I I was partners in a concrete pumping business and it's that's a tough business it's a, it's full of it's full of obstacles it's it's big money it's big finance um, it's not something you necessarily want to cut your teeth on but that's what I cut my teeth on yeah. and it was great I loved it it was one of those business ideas that I was in love with I loved pumping concrete and I figured at one point I'm just I'm gonna I'm not gonna work for somebody I'm gonna do this on my own so an opportunity came up. Um, 2008, the financial crisis hit Mm -hmm. and we had just bought some new machinery and all of a sudden we're like, oh my goodness, (laughs) what did I just get myself into? (laughs) And it was tough. Um, also at that point and you know, some, some listeners might not be, um, know this, but, uh, California emissions, you know, the whole, the whole green movement in, Mm -hmm. in vehicles really started to come online at that time. And the the chassis, the trucks that we had bought for those pumps were basically experimental. Wow. And we had a lot of problems, just downtime. I was down about 40 grand that year, 2008, 2009. And there was lots of nights that I spent on the couch at Mm. the, at Finning, at the cat dealer. And those things, like you said, go through your mind, like, do I give up? Do I throw in the towel? And I've never been a person that gives up easy, but in business, that's one of the, one of the biggest temptations is, do I give up? Hmm. And you have to have the fort to be successful. You have to have the fortitude to be able to push through those things and say, Hmm. you know what, come hell or high water, I've started something and I'm going to see it through through. and I'm going to finish it. And I think there's a lot of people out there that the bail out before their breakthrough. Oh, absolutely. Because, you know, they don't, they, they don't, the first sign of trouble comes their way or they think, well, it's, a, it's too much for me. Well, what's too much for you? Mm-hmm. You know, but, uh, you know, where, I, I guess I would say where you're a man of faith, where does faith come in to all of this? You know, you sit on the board here at the church uh, and you're what we call a kingdom builder. You mm-hmm. know, you're, your businesses, they're successful, and they're not just to build your thing, but to build the kingdom of God. Um, you know, it, a lot of the money has gone towards building the local church, building mm-hmm. missions work across the world, uh, being able to expand so that, you know, you know, part of what you have done has created a space and place that we can do what we're doing right now. Absolutely. And people can have a voice in the valley mm-hmm. uh, where they can be encouraged and inspired. So, how has faith been uh, a foundation or to keep you moving forward in those days where you're like, Lord, what do I do here? You know, like. Number, number one on, on faith in business, I would say that um, every business owner, in order to build an unshakable foundation for their family life while doing business while being an entrepreneur, 
to build a, a, a strong social life while being an entrepreneur. And there's, there's so many factors. You know, we, as, as business owners, sometimes we separate our business life from the other areas in our lives. But I believe the one thing that ties everything together is the principle of the tithe. Mm. My wife and I, from, and, you know, be, even before I married my wife, Anna, I was a tither and I've always believed in the principle of the tithe because the, the heartbeat of the church is about, is who I am. I, I don't, do, I'm not a business owner because I really want to be in business. I'm a business owner because it's a vehicle so that I can serve in my local church. Okay. And tithing really yeah. is what ties your heart yeah. to the local church. Yeah. And the fact is, is the Bible is very clear that a tither will be blessed. Mm -hmm. A tither will find opportunity. Um, blessing will be rained yeah. down in the life of the yeah. tither. So much that you cannot contain it. Exactly. Can, right? And I've seen, that, I've seen that over and over again. Um, when times got tough, Anna and I leaned back on that idea of giving 10% because what that giving that 10% builds fortitude hmm. in your life. And again, it's that rock solid foundation that puts you on a path that, you know what, no matter what comes up, God's got me. Come on. No matter what comes up, no matter what situation arises in my business, I'm going to pray about it. I'm a tither. I have a hmm. covenant with almighty God and he's going to see us through and he's going to bring the best out for us. <laughs> Jared, you're, you're dropping gold here. I don't know if you're <laughs> listeners. For some of our listeners, you know, you might not be uh, part of the church. You might not even believe in God. That, that's fine. You, I'm sure you've heard this. I've gone to all kinds of financial seminars, and it, it's it's kind of a hilarious because you'll hear somebody get up there and they'll say things like, "You know what? You got to give your first ten percent of what comes through the business of your profits back whether it's into, to the universe or whatever universe, it is. Yeah. Right? You give it out into the universe, and we can't explain." It, it just comes back. Well, we can explain it as believers. Um, the, the Behind that is it's God. It's his principle. It's a godly principle. Whether mm -hmm. you believe in God or not, it works. And, you know, sitting on the other side of the table here, I, could, I can say the same thing. Mm -hmm. You know, God has opened doors and blessed us beyond blessing. And my wife would, would tell you if she's here right now, it's his math, not yeah, our math. You know, there's, there's our human understanding of it, but then there's our trust in God and our belief in God. And uh, yeah, the Bible's clear. We don't give out of uh, out of pressure. And God, God's not after your wallet. He's, He's after, after your, your heart. heart. And I'm thinking, man, if, you, if, you, if someone can grab this principle that's listening out there and get plugged into their local church, and it's not that you're even given to the church. Yes, that's your storehouse, but you're given to God. Mm -hmm. And you're giving to him cheerfully, which is key, you know, and then, and then watch as he blesses you to be a blessing. Um, so yeah, that's, this is good stuff, Jared. This is, you know what, I, not too many times is this talked about in, you know, um, entrepreneurship yeah. and like, hey, well, what are you going to do when the money starts coming in? Absolutely. Right, like, how are you going to prioritize? And I'm telling you, like Matthew seven twenty four to twenty nine says that you know if we don't build it on the Word of God, everything else is sinking sand. There's going to be storms, and that's mm -hmm. what it talks about. It says storms will come, and the house that is built on the rock mm -hmm. will stand the storm. And we just saw that even recently through the whole season that we went through with the yes. economy and everything, what's going to stand but the truth of God. Mm -hmm. And if you're building your business, you're building your dreams on the word of God. <laughs> and man, if you're building it to further his kingdom and his house, I guarantee you, you will be blessed. Absolutely. We just had this conversation, right? Like mm -hmm. how many uh, entrepreneurs and business owners have come through the church and they've gone from zero to hero because they put God first. Yeah. Uh, but then the tension comes down the road is is the very thing that got them there. Sometimes they get distracted by the other opportunities mm -hmm. and it pulls them out of the church, but then they don't do so well. Well, you know, I was thinking about this earlier and there's a difference between being a successful businessman and being a good businessman or mm. being a good businesswoman. You know, there's a, there's a lot of successful business people out there who may have an idea or a product and it turns into a trend and it just explodes Mm -hmm. But where's the, what, what road are you following down? What's, you know, going back to the why. And mm -hmm. I, I, I like to say, you know, your why is your North Star. When you get lost and you've got your compass out and you yeah. can take your why, you, you line it up with the stars and all of a sudden you're back on track again. You that's have good. to have a powerful why. That's, this is good. And I, I, that's going back to the tithe, you know, backtracking a little bit. 
Um, the powerful thing about the tithe is how it turns your heart mm. and what it turns your heart towards. I, I became, I got involved in business because growing up, seeing, seeing men and women in business, one of the things I was attracted to is I saw, again, the difference between a successful business person and a good business person. The good business person is a generous person mm. and they live their life with their hand stretched out. Come on. And they, there was just, an, there was always an attraction yeah. for me to that. But the tithe turns your heart Come toward on. that generous yeah. handout. What's in my hand? What can I give? Let's what go. can I create? It, it gets the creative juices going. Hey, come on. That's a, we call that alignment, right? It Absolutely. Comes back into alignment. Alignment always comes before assignment. And uh, what you're saying there is found Proverbs 11, 24 to 25. The life of the generous gets larger and larger. larger. But the life of the stingy gets smaller and smaller. I don't mm-hmm. know about you, but I, I I want my life to get larger. You know, I don't want to limit what God wants to do. Mm-hmm. And the other one you keep bringing up is is key is, you know, God's after our heart. And in Matthew 6, 21 says that where your treasure is, is there your, your heart, heart is also. will also be. Yeah. So, you know, and, that, and you just think of, you think of that, what you're saying, you're, you're just dropping gold here, Jared. Um you know, if you go back to that why, back to that vision, what what am I, who am I doing it for? Yeah, you know, some people, they, they tell themselves, well, I'm doing it for my family. You know, mm-hmm. that's the first reason that's they a big get one. into it, right? Yep. I want to do this for my family. I want my kids to have a lifestyle that I didn't have. I want to be able to have freedom. But how many times have we seen, hey, great intention, but misdirection, yeah. you know, along the line, like your intentions were good, but if you're not putting God first, mm-hmm. if you're not seeking first the kingdom of God, Matthew six thirty three, you know, then it says, then all things will, will be added unto you. Um, you start to realize that these, I, we meet them, we meet men and women, and they've done well on the business side, but they're divorced. Yeah. They have no relationship with their kids, you know. Obviously, that's not us. That's not you. I look at you. You're a, you're a great husband. You're a great father. You know, even when Thank we sit you. down and we just had dinner this yeah. afternoon, you know, what comes up? We celebrate our children. We celebrate our wife. You know, we celebrate, you know, that how proud of them we are and, and that we have the flexibility, but it all comes back to that alignment. God wants us to have healthy homes. Mm-hmm. God wants to bless us. He actually, the promise he gave to Abraham is the promise he gave to you and That's I. Right. I'm going to bless you to make you a I'm blessing, blessing. Yeah. right? And so, you know, Jared, that's, that's, that's so good. I think if our listeners even just walked away with one thing, how is my business going to help build the kingdom? And, if, and if, if, if my heart is truly in it, would I be you know, willing to give him that first 10%. If that's mm-hmm. what the tithe is, it means a 10th. Would I be willing to give it, it to him and trust in him that he can use it to further the needs of my community through my church and through around the world? Because then he's, then you're really um, putting to test mm-hmm. the one thing that's going to be a struggle for everybody. I don't know uh, who you think you are, but the Bible is clear that, you know, you cannot serve two masters. Right. You'll end up loving one and hating the other. And the context of that is money. Yeah. And God wants you to have stuff. Hear us out. Uh, he just doesn't want the stuff to have you. Well, you kind of alluded it at the beginning of the podcast. Um, you know, the idea of really we're, we're starting to talk about character now, right? Mm. And the idea of, you know, how can you take your business Whoa. from, you know, that three-year to five-year um, to, to longevity and, you know, longevity is not something we see a lot. You know, I, I, I like the, the word faithfulness, you know, for as, a, as a, a Christian term or a ministry term, I guess. It's a, a word we use quite a bit around here at the church is the, the idea of faithfulness. And character, so one of the greatest pitfalls of the average business person is we start to think we're a big deal when yeah. we get some success. <laughs> Yeah, kind of big deal. <laughs> and our, our egos get inflated. And what happens is when we start mm. to to not be able to see outside that, that three-foot circle around us and we forget about our customer, we mm. forget about um, excellence in our product if, if we're, if we're into, into making a product. Um, the fact is, is that character is what will will keep you in the game for the long haul. Wow. And that goes, you know, that goes back to our conversation about being planted in the house of God. Mm. Um, It comes back to our conversation about uh, tithing because you know what? There's times when people aren't looking. And, you know, the fact is nobody knows our technology we have today, you know, 
nobody knows if you're if you're putting that ten percent mm-hmm. mm-hmm. into the church or not, but you yeah. know, and you God know, knows. Yeah. And the biggest, one of the biggest lessons I learned in life is your your character will take you will take your your talents and it will it will bring you down the road for the long haul. Wow. There's a lot of talented people out there and a lot of talented businessmen, talented musicians. You know, we, we look at the rock world, the talent and the talent. No kidding. But. There's the drugs and the drugs and yeah. the sex and, yeah. you know, the lifestyle and how many, how many guys, how many women have lost it all because mm. their character couldn't take them where their talent. Yeah. Big talent. You need big character. Come on. Woo. All right. You heard it. You know, um, something you said talking about character and, and, uh, you know, we talked about if you don't know the purpose of something, you'll abuse it. Um, I think a question that we need to ask ourselves and, and to think a little bit deeper when it comes to the businesses either we have that we've been entrusted with um, or starting one up is, are you called to this? Mm-hmm. Because I think there's a big difference between a calling or a career. Absolutely. And when people start to see this isn't a career, this is a calling mm-hmm. and your your business could be a part of your calling. If you look at How is this business going to make others love God and love others more? How is it going to fit through that Mm -hmm. filter of building his kingdom and not just building my own thing? Now you're stepping into a calling. Mm -hmm. You know, a career, eh, there's going to be days where, you know, you're just like, you're not going to feel fulfilled if it's just a career. Yeah. I guarantee you, you'll feel fulfilled if it's a calling. Solomon, the wisest and richest man that ever lived, you know, uh, he said this, you know, without God, it um, the word in the in the Hebrew is havel. That's right, meaning vapor. We translate right. it to it's meaningless Life in the is English but a vapor. version. It says it's it's without God, it's meaningless. Um, but the original word is havel, which means to try to grab vapor. You know, there's a guy that had it all, and we know this is true. Grasping because, at straws. What's that? Grasping at straws. Absolutely, absolutely, and I mean, look at. Look at all these celebrities. They've got the fame. They've got the money. Uh, why are they depressed? Why are they taking... They're not fulfilled because they see it as a career mm-hmm. and they're missing their calling. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. But just something to think about uh, as, you're, as you're moving forward, uh, whether you're going to continue uh, down the path of uh, the business that you have or starting up a new business. You know, you started, you started off with um, to count the cost, mm-hmm. right? That was the first part. And I think the second part was, you know, surround yourself with a coach. Yeah, get a so, good coach. And, and I really like that too. I'm a firm believer in that. Why why put in like years and years of hard knocks, you know, when those that have gone before you have invested, they've gone to school, mm-hmm. um, they have the life experience to pour into you. Get other, if you want to be somewhere, you got to stop surrounding yourself just with people that make you feel comfortable or at the same level as you. You got to be surrounded people by that guys. that will stretch you. Come on. They'll stretch you that are 15 years down the road mm-hmm. further than you. And uh, I would really encourage you when you're looking for a coach, look for some of those uh, lifestyle character things yes. that you said that are like non-negotiable for you. So for me, you know, they got to be a godly man. Um, they got to be a great father mm-hmm. and a great husband because I would be naive to think, well, hey, look at the way they run the business and I'm just going to take that from them and I'm going to take the meat from the bones. No, no, don't be naive. Um, you're going to get the whole package. Mm-hmm. So make sure you're looking for the character over skill. Absolutely. You know? Uh, so that's really good, Jared. Uh, any last thoughts or on this episode? We got to have you back on. This well, is there's too much here. I appreciate that. My last thought, and I was thinking about this earlier. You know, a, a lot of a lot of folks when they're starting up a business, you know, entrepreneurial that entrepreneurial spirit. You know, there's entrepreneurs just love starting something. Mm-hmm. Um, when you're when you're thinking about starting your own business, think about it as a vehicle to get somewhere in life. Mm -hmm. So often as as business owners, and I was guilty of this when I was younger, we, we, you put your heart in your business and it's hard not to put your heart into something because it's kind of like your baby, you know, you've, you brought it up, you birthed it and you brought it from infancy to, to adolescence, to adulthood. Um, 
At the end of the day, a business is just a vehicle to mm. get f- you from point A to point B. In order to be a successful business person, you have to know what you want in life. Where do I want to go in my life from point A to point B? How does my business help me get mm. there? Because some people aren't meant to be business owners. Some That's people right. are better off just going to work for somebody and working for somebody is probably going to, if if that's their bent, they're going to get from point A to point B better yeah. working from some, for somebody than Absolutely. they would be owning a business and running Absolutely. a business. And you know what? It, it And it takes a team and we all benefit uh, from it. You know, we go back to the parable of the sower, or sorry, not the sower and the seed, but the talents, Mm -hmm. you know, in the end, like we're entrusted, we're all entrusted, really. It's all God's business, That's right. but, and how we handle it, how we deal with it, if we're faithful with it, you know, we all want to hear that well done, my good and faithful servant. That's what it's all about at the end. Share in my happiness and guess, guess what? When my boss gets blessed, I get blessed. Absolutely. You know, so I want to be a part of it. It it, it is a collaboration. It's not one person getting Mm -hmm. blessed. It's like, man, I want to be in that culture, that Mm Christ-like culture of kingdom building, being so blessed that we can't contain it. So, yeah, I I totally agree. It's not for every, not everyone needs to be the boss. No. And we, you know, before you can be a great leader, we all got to be great followers. Exactly. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Jared, for well, thank um, you for coming on. And again, like I feel like we're just scratching the surface of some of these uh, things. So, uh, if you want to, if you want to hear more, um, if you've got any questions, uh, maybe even just you got some for Jared. What would be the best way to get a hold? Of, I understand right now you're limited to the amount of time that you have for, yeah. for clients and coaching. But if they were to get in contact with you, what would be the best way? Probably to the best way you? to would be to email me at my email at the church here, Jared at where people matter dot church. That's J A R E D at where people matter dot church. Come on. You heard it from the man. Again, thanks for coming on, Jared. Thank you, and remember that you have a voice in the valley.